Hello, I'm Joan Manson of Manson Fine Art, and I thank you for joining me today as I share with you a time-lapse video of the creation of the Coral Crested Acare. I hope I pronounced that right. If you're interested in seeing my more of my videos, please click on subscribe. And if you like it, I hope that you'll give me a thumbs up. This is the photo reference that I used from Wildlife Reference Photos. And I missed the very beginning. I'm sorry, my camera didn't go off as it should have. Um, I didn't draw. I'm just doing all the laying in with the pan pastels. I'm using one of the soft tools. I laid in the beak and the outside of the body using uh, yellow and the uh, burnt sienna. And of course the black for the body of the bird. And now I'm using the pointed tool the triangular tool. I don't know if they actually have names. With a blue tint. Uh, based on what he looks like, I believe these are in the same family as the toucan. But I haven't looked it up. Now I'm just adding shading to the eyeball. Now normally I would do this with uh, a pencil later on and I will use a little bit of the white charcoal but right now I'm just using my baton tools blending it in and giving it some shape. Well, I just looked it up, and indeed, I was right. This isn't the family of the toucan. How could it not be with a magnificent beak like that? I really do enjoy when I can do a pan pastel with predominantly the pastels and no past, very few pastel paper pencils um, and without a drawing. I do like drawing with the pigment. Adding a little of that orange tint the Sienna. And I'm drawing with the edge of the baton, not the flat surface of the baton. These are Jane Davenport batons. They're about six inches long. And they come in a plastic container with about with 20 of them, and they run under $10. It's really well worth the price. They last a long time. I haven't thrown any of them away yet. Of course, I've only had them, been using them for a month, but I can go through the sponges on the soft tools faster than that because I tend to be heavy-handed in the pressure that I apply when I'm applying the pastel to the sanded paper. Some people are much more delicate. I'm not. I'm just using a little bit of that yellow on the edge of one of the finger sponges. and dragging it in along the shape of the beak. Now 
This is the squared tool and it's really great for dragging, applying and dragging down the color and creating a curve. And I Pulling in the yellow tint. You know, it looks like white, but it's a yellow tint, it's, so it's very pale. And we've got the burnt sienna tint here. And I am just blending it in over that area. I'm not worrying about trying to show a direction of the material of the beak. And it's more of the yellow and the orange tint. The yellow okra. Burn sienna over that, laying it into shadow. I do like the way the tools work. It's sort of a combination of a paintbrush and a pencil. I uh, handle them like a pencil, but you get the same results that you can get from a paintbrush. I also use uh, cosmetic brushes and Sennelier pastel brushes, and I will be doing that in a future demonstration. I have done a uh, a pet portrait of Bo, where I used only, or for the most part, uh, paint brushes, watercolor brushes, and applying the pastels. And that's not original to me. There are other artists who do this. I've tried lots of just different cosmetic brushes. Some I like and some I don't. Uh, just set them aside. I may use them again sometime. They're not very expensive. So it's not a huge investment. And you might actually decide that you want to use them with the cosmetics that you apply to your face. Using that finger sponge to apply and drag down the white and causing vertical streaks and the vertical streaks are intentional. The beaks, although it, at first flush appear to be smooth, really aren't. They grow, they build up, uh, the birds uh, 
use their beaks to eat and fight and so they're often scarred and then in growth there are indications they don't shed their skin so like snakes do so everything grows on top of each other it's it's kind of fa fascinating to see And these are the white feathers. I'm going to have a really good time with these feathers. Again, using this finger sponge to apply and drag down, I'm following the direction of the feathers and creating edges of where the feathers end and begin. I really enjoyed this um, project and it really only took about an hour for me to complete. Everything fell into place. Sometimes it takes longer, sometimes the next step doesn't come to me. Uh, I see that I need to do pencil applications and pencil applications take much longer. And now I'm highlighting the bird's lovely black feathers with white and a light gray. I'm using that yellow tint along with the okra to create the feathers on the chest of the bird. Again, I have nice cut off areas so that you can see that there are layers of the feathers. And we're going to bring in some more of that blue for the background. I'm just adding a swath of color in the background. I'm using the blue because it's a nice contrast to the orange. And I'm using an oval sponge. And again, shop your uh, pharmacies, cosmetic sections for sponge applicators. They've got all kinds. The sponge applicator that you use for applying or that one uses for applying powder is ec an excellent tool. And you can get all of those for small amounts of money and they last a very long time. I find that the soft tools will get cuts and uh, develop crumbs from the contact with the uh, sanded paper. But that's not the case with the sponge applicators, the larger ones. All I have to do with those is wash them in soap and water to get the excess off. And they're as good as new. They are stained, but they are as good as new. So nothing untoward is going to happen to your piece. And I did let some of that blue go over the crown of the bird. I don't want it to look like it's a cutout, but I'll take care of that shortly.
And here I go with the round edge, soft tool, and the black pan pastel, pulling those curls up. And bringing out some stray feathers. It doesn't matter how well groomed your bird appears to be in the reference photo, it always seems to make them seem more alive if they have stray feathers. So I'm always sure to add stray feathers to my birds. Just a little here and there is so helpful. And now I'm adding the white to the curly crown. It's a crest. <laughs> the curly crest of this toucan. It's just a reflected light showing that those feathers are indeed curling. And now I'm adding dots to the end of the individual feathers, so they're in the white part of the face. I'm using the tri triangular soft tool and just dipping it in point first and transferring it to the pastel paper. It's such a simple application and it's going to make all the difference in the world of how that section of the face appears. And now I'm just accentuating the hard edges of the feathers in the body, adding the sienna to create shadows, and the yellow tint to create the edges. Because it's very important that you can see that the feathers are overlapping. Now I'm bringing in my Derwent Pastel Pencils. I'm just using a few colors to do uh, fine detailing. This is an okra. 
and highlighting what I call the teeth of the beak. There are irregular edges on the beak of the toucan that remind me of teeth. And again, it's a one of those details that adds more life to the image. I have glycine paper under my hand so that I don't smear it. The pastels don't smear that much, these pan pastels, but my hand can leave oil and that can affect further layers. This is a flesh tone and I'm just using it to bring in fine details on the tiny feathers. You can see that the pastel pencil applies very easily to the pan pastels. The pan pastels, if you overlay them, as with any pastel, if you overlayer, then the pastel pencils won't apply as readily. I prefer to use the Derwent because they're a softer pastel pencil. There aren't any good professional pastel pencils on the market that don't have great benefits but you have to find the one that works best for you and for your style. And in my case, it's the Derwent Soft Pastel Pencils. I also have some of the Fabric Pastel Pit Pastel Pencils as well. They're a little bit harder and I'll use them in areas where I haven't got a lot of pastel down, but I do prefer to use these. And we're doing highlights. And there are no color matches aside from doing things like cadmium and, and sienna and umber. There are no uh, color matches between the pan pastel colors and the pastel pencils in terms of names except for those few that I'd mentioned. So I look at it and I decide which colors are closest. It's all visual. And that's how I select them. And if when I place it, it doesn't seem just right, I can rub it out a bit and replace it with something else. Now that's not a black pencil that I'm using, that's an indigo. And this is the light blue for highlighting the skin around the eye. And I use the Tortillon for blending small areas because it's got a very nice long point. Now I'm using the white. This is a titanium white. It's very strong. Comes up pretty brightly and I'm alternating blending it in to create more of a spherical shape to the eyeball. Again, those tiny feather details that make the bird seem more real. Now 
my piece is signed. This bird's portrait is complete, and I thank you for having joined me. I do hope that you enjoyed watching this video. Let's take a look at the comparison here. You can see that the curve and the tilt of the bird in the reference photo is a little bit higher. I'm very pleased with how it came out. If you like my video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, please click on the subscribe and the bell.